Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. Today we're headed to Worth Construction Services Manufacturing Facility in Greensboro, North Carolina to talk about anchor bolts. Aaron, you excited? Oh yeah, I'm super excited. Let's take the show on the road. Let's go. It all starts with a strong foundation designed to meet the needs of the structure above and its intended use. Anchor bolts are a crucial part of that, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah, probably hear a little bit of noise because we're actually in Greensboro, North Carolina at the Worth Construction Services Manufacturing Facility. So we've got Russell Watts with us here today. Hey Russell, there. thank you for coming over. and Welcome to Greensboro, North Carolina. I love it. So we've got some things to talk about here with anchor bolts. We do. Uh, tell us a little bit about why we need the anchor bolts. So anchor bolts are used to attach the concrete structure, excuse me, concrete foundation to the steel structure above. So if you can imagine, you can't put bolts in concrete, right? So we have to have a way to get steel connected to the concrete. Anchor bolts are used to do just that. Okay. Outstanding. So I see a lot of different types of anchor bolts here or different products that you manufacture at this facility. So tell us a little bit about what these are and why the different types. Sure, so we're set up here to create different types of anchor bolts. Uh, we have here, we have a double ended stud, yep. single end stud, all thread stud. Okay. We have bent anchor bolts with the L-shaped bend. We also have uh, the ones with the tack welded nuts and washers. So there's a variety of different types of bolts that we can make. Okay, but hold on just a second. Okay. I see a single ended stud and then I see some uh, like cuts or dimples in it, yep. what's so that all about? This is what we call a swedge bolt. So swedge we can take bolt. a single end stud, All right. Uh, we swedge it, and this is used a lot in the bridge application, so the concrete, it gives the concrete something to attach to. Okay, okay, so it kind of, it, it goes into those swedges. It does, the okay. concrete does, yes. Yep, all right, all right, I got that. So this makes sense to me, of course the L is an old, it's, that's old technology, it's been out there forever. Uh, and then, how do they put it in the ground, how do they put it in the concrete? So we take the, the anchor bolts are used to sit inside the concrete. So before the concrete is poured, All right. uh, we'll put these types of anchor bolts inside the ground with a template based on top. Here is an example of a template plate that we have. Okay. So if you can imagine, the anchor bolts come up through the holes. All right. We'll put nuts on top of them to hold them together. The anchor bolts will then be sitting down, the concrete poured around it. Then after the concrete is set, we take these off, remove the template. Right. And now we have our concrete, excuse me, our anchor bolt sticking up out of the concrete ready to have a structure set on top. Okay, of for it. a lot of job sites then we supply the We supply the templates as the well. The template that yeah. goes with the that anchor bolts. Yeah, and it's as a package. It's right. covering most of this this right. whole so bolt. Two terms that you'll see with anchor bolts are embedment and projection, yeah. right? Embedment is from a little bit inside the threads all the way down to the length, mm -hmm. right? Projection is what is left sticking up out of the concrete. Sure. And then as far as projection we have to talk about the strengths of these materials. Sure. So one thing that inspectors would look at when they go to a job site is how are these things marked? Right. So tell us a little bit about that. In the ASTM spec. AST, this is ASTM 1554, and there's three grades in the 1554 specification. Okay. Uh, and those are marked respectively. So if you have a blue marking that is ASTM 1554, grade 36. Okay. If you have yellow painted on the end, that's 1554, grade 55. Okay. And then if you have a red marking, that's the 1554, grade 105. And those correspond to the yield strengths. That is correct. So it's not tensile. We, you it's don't want to get strength. confused. It's, it's minimum yield strength. Minimum strengths. yield, that's correct. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, so what about finishes? I see most of this is plain. I do see a hot dip galvanized and I see a stainless, uh, but those are the materials. But what about the stainless steel first? Let's, let's talk about that. I, why, 
Uh, do we see much stainless? And Don't see it a lot. So the, we have this after to show that what we are capable of manufacturing. So the thing about anchor bolts, right, is they're a made to order process. They're typically, there's not a standard of anchor bolts. It's whatever the engineer of record decides needs for whatever structure they're So building. these aren't just sitting on the shelf. These are not, as a general rule, they're not sitting on the shelf. They're made to order per print almost every time. Okay. So if they send us a print in and they call for stainless, Guess what? We'll make stainless for them. You bet. You bet. All right, so now finishes. Uh, uh, see plain steel. This looks like it's hot dip galvanized or mechanical galvanized. What, what are we have? Yeah, so the finishes that you'll see, typically you have a plain steel finish. You'll have a hot dip galvanized or mechanically galvanized. Right. There are other finishes that are allowed uh, per the AS10 specification, but as a general rule, that is what you're going to see the most of. One thing to note though is you're going to see more hot dip galvanizing than you will mechanical galvanizing right. for the simple reason of the tumbling process I think you did in one of your in one of your series. We we did as a matter of fact if you have not already please make sure you watch our episodes on hot dip galvanize and mechanical galvanizing you'll learn a lot about those processes there. Yeah there's some limitation in the sizes we can actually do that in because you're right. If you can imagine, one of the biggest issues that we have in anchor bolts is the protection of the threads, right? Okay. Because these are big pieces of material, right? So in the mechanical process, for example, if it tumbles a lot, you're going to get issues with the threads being tumbled to death pretty much and they will not be uh, assembled very well. Correct. So let's talk about the threads for just a second. Uh, certainly we want to protect the threads from being damaged and I think uh, Aaron you had a thread yeah, protector. Yeah, Go ahead I, do. And I brought, throw I brought that one out. with me but you know this is more for after the fact. Obviously we're not sending this out for me mechanical galvanizing right. but for job site you know, specific if you want protection of threads that can be done. There are different things that we can do to protect the threads whether it's run a nut up on the threads, whether it's to put a sleeve on there, there's different types of material we can use for the sleeves themselves. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we can do to protect the threads. And that's the probably one of the most important things, especially in transport. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the threads get protected exactly. during transport. So we have taught you in previous episodes, in previous episodes on structural bolting, how critical it is to maintain the frictional factor on the threads. Anchor bolts don't fall in that same category. So there, you see a lot of plain steel that gets, gets used. Yes, there's some corrosion that takes place on the job site, but that's okay because we're not worried about the torque to tension relationship and creating high compression loads to concrete. So it's a different application, so we're not as concerned here as we are in other structure, uh, structural bolting applications. So I want to make that point, make sure you understand that. All right, so tell us how these things are manufactured. Hey, why don't we go take a tour and I'll just show you. Oh, that sounds like fun. Russell, I understand it all starts right here. This is where it begins. So when we get a, a, um, a print from one of our customers, a made-to-order print for a, a custom-made anchor bolt, right. this is where the process starts. We've bought the material, we purchased the, the raw material. In bar stock. In bar stock. The bar stock comes in here, and we have to determine what length we want to cut it. So we, now we have to figure out how we want to cut the steel, right. right? So we have two options that we do here. We're either going to shear it or we're going to cut it. Okay. Based on diameter? Based on diameter. So if we're going up to inch and a quarter, we're going to shear it. All right. And if we're going to anything over inch and a quarter, Wait. we're going to use a saw blade and cut it. Okay. I imagine the shear is pretty quick. Shears are much faster than the cutting. Yes. Now, one of the things important is when we, when we come through here, everything always gets one of these tags or, or tickets on it. And this stays okay. with, the piece of, uh, with the piece of material through the whole process while it's being made. So this ensures that it is made to print, to spec like the customer needs, and every different piece as part of the production process gets this with it so they understand how that piece is supposed to be done at that certain part of the production. So every station, this tells them what 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 to do. That is correct. So as soon as the, as soon as the bar stock comes in, mm -hmm. this gets attached to it after it's been cut or sheared, and this will stay with that cut piece until the finished product is ready to go to the customer. Well, Russell, this is a big piece of equipment. Tell us what we're doing here. So this is our roll threading piece of equipment here. This is where we take pitch diameter material and we do roll threads for double end studs, single end studs, and this is one of the pieces of equipment that does that. All right, I'm gonna reiterate that. Pitch diameter material means your diameter is a little bit smaller than the original. When you roll threads, you actually bring the thread inward about 60% and outward about 40%. So this is roll threading and it's very, very quick. Now this is a quick piece of machinery, but so the roll threading, we also cut threading here as well. Mm -hmm. The roll threading, we can go up to inch and a half. Okay. Cut threading, we can actually get up to four inches. 
So now we're at our cut threader, so explain this process a little bit, Russell. Yeah, so this is where we make our double end studs. This is a cut thread machine, it has two heads on it, so we can run two at one time. And the process here is we get a full body diameter uh, bar stock that we yeah. run through the machine. The machine actually cuts threads into the bar as opposed to the roll thread machines which extrude it out. And that stops at that last scratch is what, where you're measuring to. That is so. correct. So yeah, we get there, uh, we put the machine, we put the bar stock in and we set the dimensions of the projection or the thread length sure. to the last scratch. All right, cool. All right, well, we saw a different type of thread rolling process in the vertical machine. This one is a little bit different. So tell us about that. Yeah, this is a little bit different. This is a cylindrical die through feed machine where we make all thread product out of. Sure, and when we do this, we also are creating a thread that's gonna be a little bit stronger because we're actually keeping grain flow through this, uh, through the thread itself, which yep. is amazing. So it's great, great process, nice strong thread. All right, Russell, so we're obviously in the welding shop here, so explain to me what these guys behind us are doing. Yeah, so this is our welding station. Uh, so as we talked about before, these are all manufactured made-to-order parts, right? Right. So they give us a drawing, which we've already talked about before, and then inside of our shop here, we'll have a ticket or a traveler, sometimes called a traveler, right. and it'll tell them everything that they need to know about this process. It'll tell them on this, Okay. This, is a, this is a smaller example of what they're working on behind it, but sure. it'll tell them where on the threads to tack either the, the plate washer right. or the nut itself, where on there that needs to be done. Uh, and yeah, they come back here, it's like an assembly line process. So they go through there, they'll get their machines, they'll tack it where it is, and they move on down the line. Really simple process, not a whole lot here. Not very this complicated. Not very complicated at all. Okay, gives a good end result. Okay, so welding on the anchor bolts. So now we're at our swedging machine, and explain a little bit of why we would need a swedge bolt. Yeah, so this is a swedge bolt, and a swedge bolt is a single end stud that we use the machine behind us here to put indentions into the seal. Okay. The concrete will then adhere to those indentions, so this isn't cut in, right? These are indented in. Right, and then these are typically used in bridge building work. bridge work. Bridge work. So something we talked about a little bit during our, our main segment, we talked about embedment and projection. Projection. Yeah, so the, so the, the projection is above the concrete. Exactly. Embedment is below the concrete. Exactly. So this swedge bolt is typically used when the when you don't have as much room in your embedment area. In that this, footing. In yeah. that footing area, yeah. that's when the swedge bolts come into play. Okay. In conclusion, anchor bolt manufacturing encompasses an array of processes. Yep. We started going through the cutting process, how the threads are done. We cut thread or roll thread, all the way even to the, the swaging process, which is awesome. And tack welding. And tack welding, last part. Yeah. So, Russell, I understand that these are customized. Every order is customized. So I think you've got a drawing here. I do, I've got a drawing here that shows, this is an example of what it looks like when we get the prints from our customers. Okay. On these drawings, it tells us everything that we need to know on how to manufacture the product, right? It tells us thread length, it tells us grade of material, it tells us the finish, it tells us where to put the nuts and tack weld the nuts. So everything that we need comes on the drawing as it comes to us like this. That's great. Okay, so customize anchor bolts to build the foundation of your structure. Custom designed anchor bolts to meet the strength and the needs of your structure. That's worth knowing. We'd like to thank Russell Watts and all the employees at our Greensboro facility. Thank you guys for having us out. We'll see you back in our Texas workshop.